Welcome to What's in the Box, Episodes of Horror with Donna and Eric. I'm Donna. Eric is actually interviewing another author at this time. Um, we have Dicey Grenor with us, who will be at Texas AuthorCon. Thank you for joining me, Dicey. Thanks so much for having me, Donna. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, it'll be nice to meet you in person um, at the event. I'm very excited. I'm not excited about Texas in July, but I'm in <laughs> I'm in Massachusetts, so we don't do well with the heat in Massachusetts. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, well, at least it's going to be indoors, because if it was going to be outdoors, we have an event coming up Saturday, and they're already talking about possibly having to postpone it. So because yeah. it's outdoors, but as long as it's indoors, you'll have plenty of AC. Yeah, yeah, that's what Eric Butler had been saying to me. He's like, it'll be fine, you'll yeah. be inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have now, a couple like, of, go ahead. Let me just say beforehand, I had a root canal and I had two crowns put in just a few days ago and I'm still really numb. So my tongue doesn't really move like it's supposed to right now. <laughs> so just a warning that if it comes out like a lisp or like a, uh, you know, like a, a tongue that's not barely, I, I, this and the, those sorts of words are kind of hard to pronounce right now. Just FYI. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I didn't even notice anything different. So you're fine. Um, we have a couple of little fun icebreaker questions um, to start off with. So at the first question is, Michael, Jason, or Freddie, who is your favorite? Oh, Michael. Um, he's very stealth. Jason. Uh, mm. Freddie is just in the dreams, and he's got that burn thing going on. I'm, a, you know what? I'm gonna go with Jason. Jason I'm gonna go with Jason because he will kill the kids, and sometimes the kids need to be killed. You know what I mean? Yep, I do. <laughs> oh, uh, but let let me just say, in the framework, because I know we've had some school shootings and everything. I don't mean to be insensitive about those sort of things. I mean in in this world, in the horror world, where kids are doing dumb things. Yep. That, that's what I'm talking about. They yeah. always do dumb things in the movies, don't they? Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. like, they're like, what's that noise? Let's go investigate. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> investigate anything that seems off kilter. Like, what? No. So yeah. there's some things that they do in the context of the movies that we're talking about that you know, it's a little yeah. too stupid to live. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so now, werewolves or vampires? Vampires all day long. And that's easy because, you know, I have a narcoleptic vampire series. Yep. I have always loved vampires since uh, Fright Night. Fright Night was my intro into vampires because I'm kind of old. And that was back in the 80s. And then um, I watched and read everything vampire that I could get my hands on. Vampires always. I love the sexy, seductive. I mean, I, the horror, the creature part is, is excellent also because sometimes there is a need for the dark you know, right. deadly. So, um, I, but I like the balance that I see with the vampires because they're also very alluring. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, when I like, I like vampires, but I like, I prefer werewolves, but I like my oh, vampires do. kind of creature looking, not like okay. the sexy vampires like yeah. um, Lestat and Louis. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, those yeah. are the sexy vampires, I, you know, and Blade. Um, I like the creature -y, looking kind of vampires like in I think it's Blade mm -hmm. 3 where they have the parasite type vampires mm -hmm. their mouths all come open those are my kind of vampires what about I do Bram like Stoker um when we have uh what's his name um oh the one Gary the Oldman one Gary yes, Oldman yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes yes what about his vampire because he he does it both yeah I I don't know because I love me some Gary Oldman um uh -huh. but the 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 old dude was just kind of weird looking and creepy so it was kind of the best of both worlds that one right that's what yeah. i mean so i like it when they can be sexy but they can also turn creature they can be yep. terrifying when need to be just like um the dracula i like the way that we did dracula on netflix yeah you know when they had the series like i really love how they did i think that was clive um Barker, not not Clive Barker, obviously not, but something Clive something. Anyway, um, I think um, I am doing terrible with names right now. No, but, that's fine. I don't remember it either, but I know what show you're. I know what you're talking about. I watched yeah. that too, and I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah, and there's something about the 
you know, the neck bite too, or wherever they're biting, you know, that's, that to me is sexy also. Like you're, um, I mean, it can be unhealthy uh, to bite blood, like in this sense. So I'm still talking about in the fictional world, in the fictional right. world where it's okay to bite, uh, you know, and get sustenance from someone else's blood, then I find that very erotic too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you have a favorite scary movie or movie? Oh, you were going in for the joke. <laughs> favorite scary movie? D can anybody pick their favorite? I can't, really. Oh, no, you can't pick your favorite. <sighs> I will say that I instead will pick, um, like, first. So I remember the first one that terrified me, and I remember it like it was yesterday. It was, have you checked the children? You know, that the, the one where the, the call is coming from the inside. Right. Yep. The name of it. And that, that my tongue did something really weird right there inside. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that I remember that Have You Checked the Children? I can't remember what the actual name of it was called, but that line always stayed with me. Like I said, Fright Night was my intro into um vampire so that's our that's pretty important to me but favorite oh my god i love dracula untold um i don't know even when we start talking about vampires a lot of people some they categorize those under urban fantasy or fantasy instead of horror right um man i just too just so many so many and then i also love some of the more psychological ones like um like martyrs, like yeah. those, the movies that aren't necessarily creatures, those are actually my favorite horror ones. Or if they have the creature in it and there's more psychological. So it's not just a stab fest, but um, there is, um, there is, you know, a, 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 a human or psychological element that makes it more frightening to me. Yeah, because that could happen to anybody, really. Right, like psycho right. was of course um a, a mental illness kind of and then he That's turned right. into the stabby guy but um you know that could happen you know That's right that um, was terrifying <laughs> mm -hmm. yep for sure now what are you reading currently do you have something you're reading for leisure i am i am currently reading okay on book talk everybody kept putting out these books i i love like if it's going to be romance, I like the dark romance aspect mm -hmm. of it. So it's kind of like horror mixed in with romance, really, because there's some very horrifying moments. But uh, there's a dark romance book that kept being recommended called The Hunting, The Haunting of Adeline. And so I read that one. So now I'm reading, reading the sequel, which I believe is The Hunting of Adeline. Okay. The first one was haunting and i i think this one is the hunting but whatever the sequel name is i jump right into the sequel so it's you know there's a lot of like um there it's about kidnapping the human skin trade and the sex trade. yeah but there's also like a, there's a morally gray um villain slash uh anti-hero slash hero you know what i mean like mm -hmm. slide scale because he's a stalker, but also he's a vigilante. So, you know, it's, I, I like that though, because that that's the sort of thing that he's just, he's not like every character that we read about. He's not either good or bad. Like you're going to take a whole lot of in between with this character. I'm right. enjoying it. And it, yeah. and it is erotic. So the erotic scenes are pretty hot too. Yeah. So that's going to be, that sounds really fun. So I'm going to be adding that to my tbr which is 100 miles long <laughs> yeah yeah it's mine too. but you know this is one of them like i i have read a lot lately but from jennifer hartman jennifer hartman it's like i was just just ingesting her books one right after the other because it was such an emotional element too so they were dark romance meaning that there's some things that's going really make you really sad and depressed and they go, the characters are really pushed through traumatic events. But then because it's so bad and so dark, they have these, these beautiful moments. It makes the, the romance that much more special. It makes the time 
when they when they are riding and high, when things are going well, it makes it that much more beautiful. And so the romances that are in, entwined in her books are so good. I ball all the way through these books, either because I'm really sad for them or I am really like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> emotional ride. That's Jennifer Hartman. Yeah. Uh, I have I can't say that I've been emotional with um haunting Adeline. I'm sorry, I'm I'm very new to this author, so I don't even know the author's name yet, but I know it's there's like I don't know, thirty thousand reviews on um, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, it's it's major. And when I got the book it was twenty five thousand. They're on uh Kindle Unlimited too. Uh, so that, you know, if you got a subscription to that, you can just jump right in. But yeah. I like it dark and sexy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if someone came to you and said, hey, I'm I'm new to reading horror or I'm new to reading dark romance, what book would you recommend? It could be one of yours or it could be somebody else's. Oh, okay. I'm going to plug myself here then. <laughs> Uh, even on TikTok, I was saying, man, are y'all noticing that it's the same books always recommended, always it recommended? Is. It is. So it's yeah. like, can we can we mix it up? Can we spread the wealth? There are some people that have, have excellent, excellent work that you never know about because they are indie, like me. Mm -hmm. I don't, are you indie? I am, yeah. You're indie, okay. Because we're indie authors and we don't have big publishers pushing them out. Or because we have not, you know, had that word of mouth from the people that read them or, you know, so it can spread that way. So I'm always looking for opportunities, um, ethical opportunities to talk about mine also. So I would say if you're into, you said horror? Horror, yep. Um, well, I have a, a new anthology. If we're talking just basic horror. So my, my vampire series could arguably be fantasy. There is a, a lot of sci-fi elements too. And then there are some horror elements and heavily erotic. That's the Narcolic the Vampire series. But the most recent book I put out was this, a an anthology with a bunch of short stories that I've been writing on Patreon um, with, uh, the, I call it an erotic cycle horror anthology. And I'm doing it in three parts. So the first one has six stories. The second one's going to have six stories. And the third one's going to have six stories for six. Nice. Six, you know? So that's the most recent one I did. Okay, outside of plugging myself, there's another author that I like to plug that, um, well, uh, okay. And, and I know this is this is going well above what you asked, but um, uh, there is an author. Uh, now, if any other time, that name would just <laughs> jump out. Um, <laughs> She has a book called Heat and another one called The Last Hour of Dawn. And that's G-A-N-N. -N, and those are absolutely fantastic. Why am I not thinking of her name <laughs> right now? How Let me look I, up. I do last. not know this author. So when I'm when I'm when I'm saying something about someone, I, I, I am very serious about my love for it. I have no reason. To, I'm not trying to steer anybody towards. So it looks like it's um, R. Lee Smith. R. Lee Smith. Yes. yes. R. Lee Smith. Okay. Yes. And these are dark. These are dark. These are dark. So there are horrifying things happening. There, you know, you heard of warnings galore, but it is such an experience. That's heat. Heat is my favorite. And then there's the last hour gone, which is just an epic adventure. We're dealing with aliens. She does a lot of aliens. Or you know creatures mm -hmm. that are running amok, they're doing terrifying things. But it's also you know very sexy, very erotic, and I just love the writing style. I'll also plug um, uh, Chantal Renee and Jay Mazur because we're all putting out more books at the same time. These are local authors here, and we have we're doing a joint uh, release party in June. So I would be remiss nice. for not mentioning them. Yeah, I know I, me and Eric just interviewed Jay with um, Damon Manx and Heather Miller. Um, so, yeah, yes, she was, yes. she's fun. Yeah, um, we all got tattoos together. This is the last one that I got when I was with them. Oh, we, wow. <laughs> we had That's a tattoo cool. party. Thank you. This is a phoenix. Nice. And, um, and, and I think Jay got an octopus and Chantel got a witch's broom. Oh, wow. That's fun. Friends who tattoo together stay together. My best. <laughs> 
my best friend and I, every couple months, we're always going to get tattoos together. It's uh, it's just the best. We have the best time going in. We have a good relationship with the guy who does our work. Totally off topic, but um, we just sit there and, and talk and laugh and have fun, you know, and ha get tattoos. And we have uh, matching tattoos. And um, oh yeah, oh that's yeah. that's fun. This is the first time I've done this, and. And this is the first one that I've had where you can see it, like without yeah. me. Most of the time they're covered. I put on a suit jacket and you can't see them. Uh, and, and if I put on a suit jacket, you still can't see this one. But I mean, even with a short sleeve shirt, this one is going to show. Yeah. And so when I first got this, I'm like, you got a tattoo? I was like, babe, I got six. Yeah. <laughs> this is the <laughs> one you can see. <laughs> yep, exactly. So for people who may not know about your books, um, Tell us about the genre that you write in or genres, if you write in multiple different genres. I do. I write in multiple genres, and I'm not so sure that's a good thing because it seems like the authors that are well-known, they mostly are known for a specific genre. So it's like um, if I tell someone about my vampire series and, and, and they like the dark stuff, when they find out about the erotic, they're like, nah, that's not for me. Or if they know, if someone knows about my rock and roll series, you know, they might like the 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 um, the erotic romance aspect, but not the dark element. So anyway, it's, I write the stories that are in my heart. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the characters come to me and that's what I write. So I'm crossing genres left and right. Good. But what I like to say mainly is I write erotic sci-fi fantasy horror. So it can be any combination of those things. It could be all horror or it could be horror with eroticism. It could be erotic, but I'm have some sci-fi elements, you know what I mean? So I like to mix and match a whole lot of them. I don't think anything kind of sits uh, snugly in any in one, genre. Yeah. I think genre. it's I think it's good for authors to write in multiple genres because it shows their their depth of what they can come up with. Not saying that a, an author who only writes in horror, or only writes in romance is, is not a good author. But I just like to be able to say, wow, this this person writes in, you know, about these, you know, creatures and killing people, but then they have this like erotic story as well that's basically a love story, you know, and love, the dark erotica is love that's not, I won't say safe, um, what's the word I'm looking for, not, it's vanilla. messy, it's, it's not, not vanilla, vanilla. it's yeah. not vanilla, yeah. So, I mean, and I'm a reader of all genres. I, you know, I will read splatterpunk, extreme. I will read, you know, cozy horror. I guess they call it Darcy Coates or, you know, Stephen mm. King type stuff. Or um, I'll, I'll read pretty much anything. I actually read your story, The Soul Painter. Oh, that was you. Yeah, that was me, yes. It's um, only been one read. I'm kidding, but thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I read that because I'm trying to, you know, get a little bit of taste of all these people that we're interviewing. Um, and I really enjoyed that story. It was a, I don't know how you'd classify it. It was kind of like a paranormal romance yes, thing. That, exactly I really, you know. really enjoyed it. It was fun. I really wished it could have been, was longer because I was really, yeah. like, invested in the two characters. I'm like, I want more of these two people. Um, mm -hmm. They were super fun um, characters. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And um, I love the cover too, because I saw the, I was scrolling through your Amazon page and I just happened to see that, the Kindle cover for it. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And, Thank you know, you. I did it, that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was, I really liked that. And, and it was intriguing because I'm like, what is a soul painter? And then when mm -hmm. the story unfolded, I was like, whoa, that's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty deep. I like that. And then the Thank twist, you. which I'm not going to say, the little twist <laughs> that you had um, was really cool, too. I was like, oh, I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. I like to say that my stories are, are unpredictable. I mean, that's that's yeah. It, sometimes, most of the time I have a, a, some twists in there or it's a twist in my mind and people don't know. They don't know the real twist. Yeah. Because, uh, there's there's a play on something that I'm going with. But thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very You're welcome. appreciative. You took yeah. a chance to get one of my works. Absolutely. I, I, like I said, I read pretty much anything. If uh, anybody, anything, I don't, I don't care. I'll read James Rawlins and then turn around and read some Eric Butler. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Although I tend to read 99% indie author. 
I'm not okay. a I'm not a big traditionally published author fan. I like I do occasionally read a Stephen King or you know like I said James mm -hmm. Rollins, but lately I've been just focusing most on indie authors. Um, yeah. because there's so much talent out there and yeah. you know you can pretty much find it you know in the romance the supernatural thrillers in the horror genre you can find indie authors everywhere um which is great yeah so tell us um, about your your writing um environment do you have music playing do you have peace and quiet what, how do you like yeah. your environment to be <laughs> Um, and it, it has evolved over the years. So it's been different at different times, depending on what's happening in my life. So uh, my day job, I'm a lawyer and I have, and you can't see my working area right here, but I have cases, <laughs> files, folders and stuff up and down this table. And um, right now I am very Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. It's like my brain is because I'm going in and out of the creative and the, the logical or, you know, my um, more analytical, um, more um, boring. I don't want to say boring, <laughs> but <laughs> the technical stuff, like you have to follow the letter of the law, blah, blah, blah. So it is difficult for me to get into the into the creative headspace when I need to. So I will move rooms. I move around now. So before, when I wasn't heavily involved in, in a lot of my cases, the, either I was taking time off or I was spending more time with my kids and stuff like that. They're older now, they're teens now. But when they were younger and I was writing, I could write at a table like this, right at a table. But now this has turned into my legal mind table. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is the structure that I need for this. And so this is the background I have when I do these these Zooms. And it just so happened I just got through having a hearing. And so I'm set up around here for the legal. But um, so that's why I'm having this Zoom here. But normally I would have Zoom, like I'm switching headspace and I'm going into the creative. I would have that in my media room where I have I have posters everywhere, horror films, horror movies. Nice. I have all kinds of stuff, and there's skulls everywhere, candles. You know, it's more of a creative vibe in there so that I can get into that mental space. And that's where I prefer to write. I move around in there um, sometimes. In terms of music, I usually have to have something on. I have to have something on, and that's no matter what I'm doing. So if I'm working, doing legal work in here, uh, I'll have like eight... Um, ADHD music, something to help me stay focused. And when I'm doing creative stuff, then I will have, um, you know, something to, to get me in the mood. So it might be if I, a lot of what I write is is based in metal. So I might have metal blast or something like that. So it's more mood based. But it's really, it depends on what I'm writing mm -hmm. and when I'm writing. So if I'm heavily invested in something else at the same time, then I have to delineate the two halves. I have to split myself off <laughs> so that I can stay focused on what I'm doing creative. Nice. Yeah. We've heard a lot of that. Some people, when, when they're talking about their music, say, it depends on what I'm writing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, I'm the opposite. I have to have, like, complete silence when I'm writing. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, or, or when I'm working, because I work at home and, you know, I have to have, what if, like, my son is home or my husband happens to be home, I'm like, I can get nothing done. Um, mm -hmm. So I like during the day when everybody's out of the house and I'm working it or I'm trying to write it, it's quiet. Oh, okay. But I yeah, like what I find about quiet for me is that it's never actually quiet. Um, and I probably should be diagnosed, you know, like I, I, I don't have a formal diagnosis, but there's probably some neurodivergency in there. Uh, so I, um, like I'm distracted by the birds. I'm distracted by my doubt, my dog's tail wagging. I'm mm. distracted, you know, like I'm, I can hear like it's, even if there's silence, it's not silent to me. And I get really distracted easily by, easily. you know, yeah, I can hear the car door out there. So I'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> who is it? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on what's going on yeah. so yeah so the music is very specific like and i'm so happy that we have this now because i didn't know this about myself early on i just was struggling with different things i didn't know 
Now I can turn on something on YouTube or on Spotify and it actually do exactly what I need for it to do, you know, with my brain chemical, whatever, you know, the neurons that's going on in here yeah. helps me to stay focused and stay on track. And plus I, you know, coffee and Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, so tell us about, um, besides going to Texas AuthorCon and visiting your table, um, where can someone get your books? Of course, beside like Amazon, are you available in Barnes and Noble? Do you have a website of your own that people can buy signed copies from? Things like mm. that. Um, thank you for having me on this, by the way. Um, oh, you're just welcome. To be able to even talk about Texas AuthorCon and this. So, uh, but I think the main one would be Amazon. Yes, I do have a website, but I think the website probably links back to Amazon. Okay. I have a, I have a store now with like uh, fetish merchandise, uh, BDSM type related stuff, because I do a lot of that in my writing. And uh, that's spicydiceystore.com. And I'm going to add my books on there. So that I can, if anybody wants like an autographed copy, they can get that directly from me. It's it's yeah. still very new. I've released it in April. So I'm still loading, still tinkering, still figuring that merchandising thing out. But I am going to add books on there so that people can buy directly from me if they want. Especially because some of my books get banned. So they're, oh. <laughs> they're, on, they're on Amazon. Hopefully they don't get banned from there. But I have I have one called Shameful that really triggers some people because it's um it's delving into something like um Nabokov's story, Lolita. And um, Okay. Yeah. So it's it's um so it's it's taken down off of some of the other sites, but it is still on Amazon. But I do have uh ebooks on Online, I think wherever books are sold, they haven't been banned because of the content, and uh, some and paperbacks and some audio. I have uh, three, two, two audio books, and I'm in the process of make of having another one produced. And that's they're they're anywhere. Like if you pop in, if you pop, if you put, if you populate Dicey Grinner, I believe my books will pop up online. They are not in brick and mortar stores. I have okay. not gone the process of of uh, I think it's Ingram Sparks that we can do as indies to get them. I have not yeah. done that. Yeah, I haven't done that. I'm not saying that I won't. I just haven't. And um, and I'm I'm at a lot of events again this year. This is the first time I've been back face-to-face -face selling books since 2017. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved going to the comic cons and the book events before, but I'm just now getting back to doing that. I mean, there was a pandemic that kind of took some time out. I know. <laughs> Damn it. Um, yeah. I'm super excited to go to Texas. I just went to AuthorCon in Williamsburg, Virginia in April. Um, How was that? Oh, it was so much fun. But I know a lot of the authors that were there because I'm really yeah. in the indie horror scene. Um, okay. And I got to meet Eric Butler for the first time. And him and I do this podcast together. We've known each other on Facebook for a while. And um, yeah, it was just nice to see my family, you know, because that's what I consider all these people is my family. Um, so it'll be nice to maybe make some more family out there at Texas Author Con, meet some people that I've only interacted with online, like Jay. Um, and Heather Miller. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's it's going to be fun. And definitely people should come and check it out. It is July 14th and 15th in Richard, Richland, mm -hmm. Richland, Texas. I oh, keep getting uh -huh. that mistake. Um, it's a free event. Um, we'll have a link to the event, um, Eventbrite, in the description of the video. Um, even though it is a free event, you're encouraged to get a ticket that will um, make you eligible for the door prizes. Um, so if you want a chance to win some door prizes, go to Eventbrite and sign up for a free ticket and you'll have your shot. Um, Dicey, go ahead. You're awesome, Donna. I was just gonna say, you're Thank awesome, you. Donna. I look forward Thank to meeting you. you. Yes, I was going to say, you are so much fun to talk with. I can't wait to meet you in person. Um, <laughs> it's going to be fun to hang out. I am going to have a table, um, so I won't get to do too much socializing, but right. we'll still be able to hang out a little bit, I'm sure, because I definitely want to meet you. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time, um, and we'll see you in a couple of months. See you in a few months. All right. All bye, right. everybody. Bye. <laughs>